But before we close out, Lori, I, I'd love to chat a little bit about the Euros with you. Uh, listen, you all are killing it on, on ESPN. I hear you. I hear I hear Danielle Slayton. It, it's it's so great to to sort of watch this and see you all give your inputs as well. Uh, hit me with your most uh, the team you're most impressed with right now during during uh, these early stages. Well, first of all, thanks for saying that because we're having a blast. I mean, it's such a fun group um, that's been put together. And for me, it's like reunion, right? Danielle Slate and I are 25 years friends playing on the U16 national team. I played with Steffi back in the WSA, right? I've known Emma for 15 plus years and Julie with the national team. And so, yeah, it's like a huge reunion. I mean, we're all like campfire, wine drinking every night, right? Debriefing games and stuff. So it's been it's been amazing highlight for me for sure. Um, but like, listen. Germany, is like they have been lights out, that. and there was like it was interesting because coming into this, you know, there was a lot of talk like, okay, like, do they have enough defensively, right? Do um, what are they going to look like? Um, but I was able to call their first game and against Denmark, and wow, they were awesome. And just their and then going into that Spain game, which was such a powerful and clinical um, performance against Spain, who we know how lovely they are to play football, but have a difficult time with it, like a number nine and have somebody that's going to stretch them vertically. But we got some insight information about them, the three games in between, the three days in between their first and second game against Spain. Um, all they did is work on defense. How are they nice. going to shut down Spain? They knew they weren't going to have the ball. So this is a team that you feel like is extremely wow. prepared. They have such a good balance. And I think that was interesting um, for me coming into this tournament and just prepping for them was watching and, and having played with Steffi Jones, who's a, a German player, and she came over and played with the Washington Freedom, just knowing how the old German team played, which is so good defensively, had um, really quality finishers up top. But the evolution is that they have these kind of like Spanish S type players that are super crafty in the midfield, but also still have that kind of like German mentality. So you just get this complete like sense of like complete completeness, I guess, and really good balance. Um, I think the one question mark still is if somebody can really threaten vertically, how well do they do with like the back, their backs um, or, or their, them facing the goal defensively and having to like retreat and what's their um, defensive um, organization look like then. But my goodness, they've been fun to watch and they're my favorite right now. Outside yeah, of I'm with you. I'm so glad you brought up Germany. I mean, I think going into this one, I think one of the things around like question marks around them was I think people were a little curious about the youth of this team, right? Yeah. Maybe sort of equating that to something like inexperience. Yeah. But watching them perform over these couple uh, group matches, it's like they're very disciplined. And it's like if you have that type of, you know, youth that really is like eager to be coached, you know, and, and wanting to sort of in, in, in place that discipline and sort of execute the game plan, I think we're seeing it kind of play out coming to life. But I mean, there's also been some blowouts in over the course of this, these two match days. I mean, you had Norway at one point having that, you know, four one win over Northern Ireland only to turn around and face England and have an eight goal day dropped on them. I just, I just, I'm like, I'm still, it's not good. Yeah. Um, you know, they play today, so it'll be interesting in that, in terms of regrouping. Right. Um, I think what's interesting. And again, I had them the first game against Northern Ireland. So I had, had done a lot of prep on them and, and listen, there was some question marks in that like defensive line. Right. So, I mean, you're talking about Hegerberg, Graham Hansen, um, Wrighton up top. I mean, world-class, some of the best, if not the best front three in a lot of regards. Um, but just shaking even that Northern Ireland game, just giving balls away to Northern Ireland that resulting into few opportunities if a Northern Ireland team had had more experience, a little bit more ability in front of goal. So to me, I was like, this isn't going to be a great game against England. I'm a little bit nervous. I didn't expect 8-0, but, yeah. um, but outside of Germany. I, I mean, don't think anybody did. <laughs> yeah, no one did. Outside, anybody of, did like. outside of Germany, whew, England, they've been great. Um. They're, they're fun to watch, and I think um, Bigman has done, who actually is in COVID protocol now, so she'll miss today's game. But um, she's got them. The home know, side, and then they're playing like it, yeah. quite frankly. So it'll be about, I think, for them, just handling that pressure, right? Handling the pressure, the expectations, 
one game at a time and no doubt will big men be like one game at a time <laughs> <laughs> so uh, i can't say that the, the tournament's been awesome the play has yeah. been awesome we've had doubled the amount of goals i think it is don't quote me on that but um yeah it's been top class for really folks cool. who are joining us uh live there's there's a couple games today there's games yeah. through the weekend uh we did this with, with nw nw song we were talking about biggest matches what are what are some of the the games that you really think folks should try to keep an eye on if they can only pick a, a couple of games to watch this weekend yeah well i think today's norway austria is interesting because it's a must win for norway and i think the big question is how how do you regroup how do you bounce back from you know what i think that they would deem as an embarrassment right so um, what does that look like what is internally their their group um, and how they're going to do and then i'm on the spain denmark game tomorrow um i think that's going to be a fun one um you know denmark still in the still in the mix but how yeah. do they react to a spain team right that's going to have the ball so um and then let me see just need to check for i'm curious about uh i'm curious about Sweden and Portugal. Yeah, actually, I, I, I'd like to see how that plays out. Well, we talked about two of the good teams, Sweden. Goodness yeah. gracious! I mean, I think that's the that was everyone's favorite coming in, right? And that has not been the case. It hasn't been great. And then all of a sudden, they find themselves in this important game on Sunday with um, Portugal. So, and Portugal, don't sleep on them. They are good. They have some ability, right? They want to play and stuff. They're you know they get caught a little bit defensively in aspects, but. I think they're going to give Sweden a game. I, I feel you on that. I'm uh, I'm excited to sort of keep uh, keep watching the Euros roll out. It's it's summer of soccer for yeah, <laughs> for this side of the game, right? We've got everything happening right now. Uh, thanks, Lori, for joining us and talking a little bit about the Euros with us on top of NWSL. But you know, there's Women's Africa Cup of Nations out there, Copa Femenina. Obviously, the Concacaf W Championship is is currently taking place. We've been pushing all that stuff here whenever we've been going live and trying to encourage everyone to to watch uh, all of it if you can. Quite frankly, there's a lot of great soccer happening right now in the women's game so uh get out there and watch it if you can thank you all so much for joining us and listening to attacking third we appreciate your support as always just want to remind you that we're nominated for a couple of awards you can vote for us for the best female hosted podcast category at the people's choice podcast awards go to podcastawards.com slash app slash sign up and you can also vote for us for the best podcast at worldsoccertalk.com. We appreciate you all so much uh, for your support and your votes. Thanks for nominating us for the awards. Of course, you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Attacking Third. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you listen to your shows. And we're also available as video. Subscribe at youtube.com slash Attacking Third. And uh, we'll be back covering USA versus Canada in the CONCACAF W Championship. It's going to be a doozy. Make sure you tune in for Sandra Herrera and Lori Lindsay. This was Attacking Third. <laughs>